Welcome back everyone, Mean Poo here, and today we will take a look at the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, or for short, Intel XTU. The reason for this video is because some users out there feel a little intimidated by throttle stop and would like to see another undervolt tutorial with something that's a little more simpler and easy to use. And you know, I can't really blame some people for that because the Intel XTU, it's kind of clean and you don't have much to work with. It's just one toggle, move it left and right. And that's pretty much about it. I mean, you don't have all the functionality of throttle stop, but hey, if you're just trying to do something simple, this should work. So if you are one of those people, this is for you. I will be using the software on the Acer Nitro 5 with the 1050 Ti for graphics. First thing we need to do is search for the software on Google, Bing, or whatever search engine you want to use, or head over to Intel if you know where you are going. Please do not click on the first link you see as there is always the possibility of sites hosting the software that may have been compromised and injected with Viri. So just take a few seconds to look at the link. When reaching the Intel page with the XTU link, click and accept the license agreement and either save the software to your drive or choose the run option. If you choose to save the software, you will have to locate the executable and launch it. If you choose run, it will launch the setup automatically when finished downloading. You will be faced with another license agreement. Feel free to read through it if you want. Place a check in the box and click install. When the install is finished, restart your computer. Next, make sure your power profile is set to better performance or set in the middle if you haven't adjusted or made any custom changes. When finished, launch the Intel XTU. You will now see the system information screen that has a lot of useful info here. You have details about your processor, such as the number of cores and base speed. You'll also be able to see the total memory and the banks in which they are installed. RAM speed, capacity, and manufacturers are all also useful. Other items of interest are the BIOS, motherboard, available graphics chipsets, and XTU version number. Lastly, you have the operating system and watchdog. This is essentially an electronic timer that is used to detect and recover from computer malfunction. Clicking all controls under advanced tuning will give us a warning. It's essentially saying that altering your voltages can damage your CPU if used in a reckless manner. It's also not covered under any warranty if you do something silly like negative 200 undervolt or put in extreme numbers that make no sense. So respect the hardware and you do this at your own risk. In this block, we also get an overview of all the controls we can adjust. Some items may be dark or grayed out, which means you can't adjust them. What we want to focus on is the core voltage offset. There's also the core voltage, the turbo boost power max and time, and just under that, you will see what we saw in throttle stop on the fever screen. It's called multipliers. What we see here is matching up perfectly to what is on the Intel page on this specific processor. This is one of the things that makes throttle stop a little better as you can change the multipliers to what you want. Moving on down, we are seeing some familiar items in throttle stop, such as the cache and graphics. You can actually undervolt your Intel graphics chipset. And I think this program here is excellent for doing so. If you happen to try it, you can then take your setting and enter it in throttle stop. So with that said, let's get down to business. From here on out, I will show you how I undervolted my CPU. I already know the max it will take, but I will show you step by step. Let's click on the core voltage and choose a modest number. How about negative 0.045? 
Now I will apply the undervolt. Notice on the right side, you will see the current offset and then the proposed. The proposed offset is what we just set up, which is negative dot zero four five. Now we must test this undervolt to see if it will take. Head over to the stress test section on the left, put a check in CPU stress test and leave it for five minutes. I will not let it run for five minutes, but you can. Like I said earlier, I know what it can take. So I'll let it run for a couple of minutes and then stop. Anyway, let's go. Click the start test button. As the test is running, take note at the bottom of the screen. There is a lot of info down here. Let's pay attention to the package temperature, thermal throttling, power limit throttling, processor cache frequency, and of course the graph. So that test finished with no problems at all. Let's pick another. How about negative dot 100? We will click apply and start the test again. Again, no problem. Now we can compare the max temps of each test. It looks like for the first test, we have a maximum temp of 73. And this is in Celsius, just in case you didn't know. The second test reached a high of 71. Not good, but not bad either. So let's try again. I'm picking an undervolt of negative dot 115 now. And let's see what happens. Looks like we got a high of 67. So that's currently six degrees. Now, I can push my undervolt and throttle stop to negative dot 125. I was never able to do this in Intel XTU without a crash. So let's try that and see what we get. All right, again, the high is 67. So let's go ahead and push this to negative dot 130. All right, we dropped two more, which brings us to 65. Okay, more, let's go more. We need to push this more, right? Let's go for negative 140. Now notice how this video is captured by external means. And I'm sorry by the way it looks. And why am I doing it this way? Well, because when I ran the stress test, the computer crashed. And when it crashed, the actual file that was being recorded was corrupt, so I couldn't use it. So I'm just recreating what happened. So the test finished and the max temp was 60 C. So we went from 73 to 60. That is a 13 degree drop, which is pretty good. So remember what I said earlier about knowing the max undervolt? Well, guess what happened when I tried to run a game? Yep, that's right, crash. That's why it is important to test a game with your undervolt because sometimes the in-app stress test is not enough. Now here's a video with an undervolt of negative dot 125 using external recording and software on the computer to record as well.
Now here is an undervolt of negative dot 130 recorded like the previous. And lastly, the stock temps. Notice how the temps for the CPU are pretty close, but the FPS is a lot higher when externally recorded. That is because the computer can put most of its resources to the game instead of trying to render and record video. Next up are the benchmarks for the voltages. Starting at stock voltage, we get 885 marks with a max frequency of 3.1 gigahertz and a max temp of 79. At negative 130 we get, whoops, we crashed. So we have to scratch this undervolt. One, negative 130 just will not work. Even though it ran okay in the game and the stress test, it still crashed later on. That's why some people run their stress tests for hours at a time before making a deadlock decision. So on to the next one. At negative dot 125, we get 889 marks with a frequency of 3.18 gigahertz and a max temp of 70. Now, let's talk about something really good called app profile pairing. This will let you run a specific undervolt with a specific application when it started. So how do we do this? Let's head over to the far left panel and select app profile pairing. As you see, I already have a sample set up for Far Cry 5. Let's set up one for HW monitor. Since I don't see it in the list, I will have to browse for the EXE. Click the browse button and locate your application of choice. Select the EXE and click open. You will be back at the previous screen with your current saved undervolts. There will be two categories, one for AC and one for battery. I'm going to select negative.115 for both and click pair. Next, I will click the turn on button at the very top. Great, we're all set. Now, say for instance, you want a lower undervolt when using your battery. So how can we do this? Well, first, turn the app profile pairing off because nothing can be edited with it on. Let's head over to core voltage. And since I know that the max undervolt is negative dot 125, we'll use that offset. Click apply and save. Let's name the profile to the offset, which is negative dot 125 and click save. Head back to the app profile sharing. Select the profile to be edited and ours will be HW monitor. Click the pencil icon to the right and then choose the triangle. This will pull down available profiles for you to choose. Select the one you want and click the blue check to complete the edit. Don't forget to turn the app profile setting on. Okay. Now, here's the test. Let's look up the program and keep an eye right here. Keep your eyes right here and watch. As you can see, the application changes the undervolt when started. Let's test the battery profile. Notice when the AC power is removed, you will see the thermal throttling change to yes for a brief second. And then the profile is changed. We are sitting at negative dot 125. So this is working guys, it's working. I will now plug the AC power back in. All right, we're golden. We are golden. Well, this concludes the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And in closing, if the video helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you would like to know the hardware that I am using, I have it listed in the description box and I would like to thank everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.
Mean Poo, out.